Jesus describes these kind of people as a spring without water, offering much and delivering little. Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Michaela, and today we're gonna to be talking about false teachers slash false prophets. We live in a time where information is everywhere, and there's so many people who wanna be gurus, coaches, teachers, all over online and this information is just coming in and out and if you're not grounded in what the word of god says then this information could be getting into your subconscious and impacting the way you live your life now that's dangerous because if it's not coming from god where is it coming from so i want to help you strengthen your discernment so you can identify when you've come across a false teacher and somebody whose source is the demonic so let's start by defining what a false prophet is. A false prophet is described as someone who claims to speak the word of God, but is instead spreading false teachings. The second one, a false prophet is a person who falsely claims the gift of prophecy or divine inspiration or to speak for God or who makes such claims for evil ends. Now, why would anyone wanna do that? Well, from what I've seen, most of the time, these people don't even realize that that's what they're doing. God says in 2 Timothy 4, 3 through 4, for the time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths. There's two kinds of false prophets. The first kind are the kind that are within the church, otherwise known as the wolves in sheep clothing. The second kind are those that are not inside the church. This is your new age teachers, your gurus, your shamans, your goddess worshipers, your Reiki masters, you get the idea. Second one is the one I'm going to focus on because that's where my experience lies. If you don't know my story, Jesus saved me from the occult and from new age beliefs and practices. What led me there was I was seeking God and I was seeking healing, but I grew up with a childhood full of abuse, drug addict parents, hypocritical Christians. So I didn't trust the world and I didn't trust the church especially. So when it came time to me recognizing the fact that like I'm deeply broken and I need healing, the last place that I was willing to go was the church. So instead, I tried to heal myself and I came across plant-based living and yoga and Christ consciousness and all these new age teachers like infinite waters. And I ended up moving to Arizona and came into a yoga teacher training program at this like super spiritual school. And I was like, this is the place that I'm going to heal. This is the place that I came across my first spiritual teacher. And I was just enthralled by this feminine energy and reclaiming the suppressed feminine and you know just finally getting my power back because at that time i was just a super broken acne face didn't know her worth or her voice kind of girl and these teachings are centered on you 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 your healing your desires taking your power back and there's just like this like like aggressive vengeance energy to it almost like like you were on the hunt to take it back and you've been suppressed and when i was under this belief system like i hated christians my whole youtube channel was anti-christian um which is interesting because i was fine with every other religion but christianity and i was a part of satan's army but i just i had no idea he was rearing me up and then i found myself working in a nightclub and i justified it just the same like this is a part of healing my feminine and and i'm the one empowered here and you know just all these lies that i believe despite the fact that at truth i was really selling my soul and hurting myself and adding layers and layers of trauma onto the trauma i already had but it was masked with this this pride charade of the devil but i met somebody here and this just escalated the path to destruction that I was already on. So I find myself in this club, I meet this guy and we have a relationship and I end my other relationship and this other guy has a family. And um, this is when I began to realize that other people were now getting hurt because of me and my actions and me seeking my pleasures and my desires and just putting myself before everybody else 
other people were getting hurt and I was now recognizing like, I'm not the wounded one anymore. I'm not the broken one. I'm the one causing woundedness and brokenness in other people. But it was within this relationship that God began to reveal himself to me because he knew that he could not let this go down. So it was like, every time I would see this guy, something crazy would start to happen. Like one time a whole pack of baby spiders just like unleashed all over the room. And this was the relationship where I saw a demon in this guy as well. And so that was of course enough to bring me back to Christ. And I realized in that, that I had opened these portals and that I was on the wrong side because this demon didn't just come into my life because I wasn't doing anything. Seeing this demon is what made me realize that I had been opening dark portals and it was the first thing that made me take responsibility because I knew like demons, okay, fallen angels, angels are messengers. And this was a message from God, like girlfriend, you are walking on the wrong side of this right now. something clear. Both God and Satan are attracted by your wound. And you're either going to let the God who made you, the God who knows every single hair on your head into that space, or you're going to try to fill it with something else. And that something else, regardless of what it is, will destroy you. The spirit clearly says that in later times, some will abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits and things taught by demons. So how can you spot these demonically inspired teachers, aside from the obvious of them wearing the crystals and talking about Christ consciousness and referring to God as the universe and doing psychedelics, like those things, obviously. But sometimes these demonically inspired teachings are a little less obvious and they look like they're almost the truth. They feel good like they're almost the truth, but they're not the truth. Number one, they lead you away from God. These teachers appeal to what you want to hear rather than what you need to hear. For example, what you want to hear is follow your heart, do what feels good to you, put you first, etc. What you need to hear is that life on earth is temporary. It's short and it's preparation for eternity. Hell is scary and it's no place that anybody would want to be. And that's why God came as Jesus to save us from ever having to go there so long as we place our faith and hope in him. If these teachers are teaching something other than this, you know, that everybody goes to heaven and what you believe is true and what I believe is true, these are false teachings and they're leading you away from God. The harder messages don't feel so good, but those messages are love. Think about when you were slipping and nobody told you like, hey, you probably shouldn't make that decision. And then you realize it years later and you're like, did nobody love me enough to let me know that I was on the path to destruction? So number one in summary is that these false teachers appeal to human desires and human comfort rather than the truth of God's word. Number two, you can identify these false teachers by where they're leading you. Because usually it's to themselves, to yourself, to some kind of plant, to the universe, something other than Jesus. It's usually buy my program, go on my retreat, oh, you're following what I'm teaching and you're still miserable, you probably need to purchase my one-on-one -on -one coaching because I know everything and I'm the guru and come listen to me. These teachers are also often leading you to yourself. And there's a healthy balance of this, you know, you wanna know yourself, you wanna be able to be peaceful inside yourself. But I'm talking about like the dangerous level of counting on yourself and looking to yourself as, as you are God. So evolving yourself, healing yourself, even so far as saving yourself. And that was one of the first things I realized when Jesus came to me was that 
thank God I don't have to do it on myself because one, I was failing and two, it's just so much better to have God on your side and to be doing it with him and to let him heal you and him save you because at the end of the day, he's the only one that can. So you're just like running this race for nothing. Or they're trying to lead you out into the universe uncovered and unprotected but once again they don't realize that that's what's happening like they genuinely think like oh this is helping me so i'm going to teach this to others so they don't realize that these demons have literally inspired these teachings and these demons want you they want you out in the universe like i said uncovered and unprotected because that's where they can infiltrate so they have they've deployed their spirits into these teachers and these teachers are bringing them to you like a stranger things episode and you're going out into the universe and they're coming to you in these spirit guides and they're giving you these insights about what you should do with your life and, and sometimes this looks like you know tear apart sometimes it's not a hallucinogenic like psychedelic where you're actually like going way out there sometimes it's a tarot card you're seeking meaning you're seeking purpose you're seeking to know what's going to happen and they give you these messages via these tarot cards so it's anytime you're seeking for answers and to know yourself and to understand what's going to happen but you're looking outside of god's word a good teacher would lead you only to god's word not to any of these other modalities and a good teacher would not try to act like they know everything like everything that they have comes from christ it comes from god and so at the end of the day like they would encourage you to go seek christ to read your bible to to seek insight and discernment from the holy spirit yourself like you don't have to just go to this person to receive insight from God. False teachers like psychics, mediums, gurus, shamans, they do signs and wonders and give credit to themselves. Whereas a good teacher, a biblical teacher, a God-fearing teacher is going to always give credit back to God. Number three, Jesus says you can recognize them by their fruits. When I first met my husband and moved to Florida, he was a mortgage broker and he was connected to this real estate team and this real estate team had been planning this trip, this weekend retreat, where the idea was to level up in their business and they sold me on, on going to this retreat and I looked into it a little bit and it was all about like activating your higher self, just a lot of new age teachings and I was like, no way are you going there without me because I've been on this side of the spiritual world and I now have the discernment to see what's good and what's not good because he felt like he had to go so i was like okay if you're going i'm going too so the leader of this event is up here i'm not going to say his name because you probably know him um but he's up on this stage and he's like do you want to make a million dollars another million dollars and of course all these real estate agents are like yes like me yes i want to and he's like okay so this is what you need to do and he's got the big hippie hat and the crystal something hanging here and the white t-shirt and jeans and boots and you know just moving around the room like he is like spiritual guru like he is he has evolved the christ consciousness and like everybody listen to me because i have all the answers and i'm going to tell you and at first you know some of it was just like good basic business insight and then it just started to get more and more spiritual as time went where i'm like whispering in his ear i'm like that's a false teaching that's a false teaching you know at the end there has to be a call to action right and so he keeps promoting he keeps looping back to oh ayahuasca helped me ayahuasca helped me level up in my business ayahuasca helped me find myself and figure out my family and my business and who i am and break free of the suppression and and everything was like meditation and ayahuasca. So one of his final skits, he brings up his ex-wife and the message was supposed to be one of like, you know, they're teaching us how you can be divorced and consciously uncoupled and co-parenting and get along and how like evolved people would go about this process. And it was a train wreck. You look into his home life, you look into the behind the scenes of what he's teaching and it's destruction, it's train wreck, it's pain. And they're just kind of like throwing like jaded things back and forth, but trying to like make it seem like, oh, they know, and like, this is what you need to do. And so yeah, he can teach everybody how to make millions of dollars, but what about his home life? Like what about what matters, the people that he loves? Those fruits were rotten. 
and that's what the devil does is he sells you on this illusion of everything's going to be so great but he gives with one hand and takes with the other and what he's giving is never as good as what he's taking away from you whereas a good teacher is effective and productive and they have dignity and integrity and once again they point you back to the glory and hope of Jesus and the truth of his word. Jesus describes these kind of people as a spring without water, offering much and delivering little. So in summary, on the outside, these false teachers look so close to true teachers, to good teachers, where you just might almost buy it, but their source is different, their intent is different, where they're leading you is different, the fruits are different, and the end result is different because the end result is destruction. I hope this video was able to help you be able to discern a little bit better um, and help you see the seriousness of discerning the spirits in the teachers that you're choosing to listen to. If you have any further questions, please drop them in the comments. And in the meantime, YouTube thinks you should watch these videos next.